Friday, January 25th, 2019, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about what, in my opinion, is the safest bank in the UK. And why am I uh, going on to that subject? Well, uh, on Wednesday, one of the so-called challenger banks in the UK, Metro Bank, uh, collapsed 40% its share price, 35 or 40%. Uh, what's a challenger bank? Well, it's a, a, one of the new banks that's popped up since the crisis of 08. Uh, in the UK, there's uh, not many banks at all. It's all very concentrated on f five big banks, uh, NatWest or Royal ba Bank of Scotland. Uh, that's one. Uh, those two are together, of course. You've got Lloyds Bank, Barclays, Santander, and uh, what's the other one? HSBC. So there's five ma major banks uh, that control the really the, the whole picture. So these small banks have emerged in the last uh, few years. But as I will show you uh, from this Metro Bank story, are they safe or are any other of the big banks safe and of course uh, I'll uh, come up uh, with my opinion of uh, what the safest bank in the UK is uh, that's before I look at the markets of course it's uh, a little later it's 8 20 a.m. Uh, a little later than usual of course so 8 20 a.m. and we'll have a look here uh, at what the markets are doing uh, spot gold uh, 1284.20 up three three dollars um it's up a quarter of a percent the the range has been uh, 1280 to 1285 uh, uh silver is uh, 1539 up eight so precious metals doing a little better this morning uh so that's up half a percent uh the dow uh, is up 70 points or a quarter of a percent at 24622 the dow futures the S&P 500 is up a third of a percent or eight points at 26.50. NASDAQ 100 future is up a third of a percent as well at 67.20. Uh, what about the currencies? Uh, pound is at 138.85, up 0.16 of a percent. The uh, euro is at uh, 113.24, up. 0.16 as well and the dollar is up about a tenth of a percent against the yen 109.80 uh dollar is down a third of a percent though against the chinese currency uh or the yuan at 677 uh crude oil is up uh all just under a percent wti 53.65 what about the yield curve or the bond markets uh well let's have a look here uh the uh, 10-year yield uh, right now is at 2.724. The uh, curve is still inverted uh, one year to five year uh, by about uh, a couple of, uh, well, a one and a half basis point. So that that's the market's fairly quiet still. Um, stock market still, uh, yeah, still fairly firm, I would say. But uh, we'll need to wait. I saw some headlines yesterday about I think it was Wilbur Ross. He's the uh, secretary of the commerce, former Rothschild banker. He he said that uh, the U.S. and China are miles apart, uh, uh, so to speak. I think uh, I paraphrase what he said. He said they're miles apart, uh, you know, to coming to some kind of agreement. So that's the uh, you know the trade negotiations. They're supposed to get it done by March this year, I think. I think beginning of March, or I'm not sure if it's beginning or end of March, but uh, they've got a deadline. So, uh, yeah, the other day, uh, and I will tell you what the safest bank, in my opinion, is. And I don't have an account with them. Uh, I'm not doing a sponsored video or anything. This is out of my own um, view. Uh, I will tell you that. But first, let's look at this story. It came out on Zero Hedge yesterday, or Zero Hedge picked it up. It says UK bank crashes to record low after mismarking loan book. So I'll read a little bit about the, this. And it's interesting because uh, this Metro Bank, it's popped up all over the place. They've got a lot of branches. Uh, they've got one here uh, where we live. Uh, my daughter, uh, when she turned 18, 
uh, we went there and opened an account for her. Uh, they open on Sunday, so it's convenient. Uh, they allow you to, I remember they allow you to bring your pets in the, you know, Billy went into the Metro Bank. Uh, they give them treats, very friendly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, did I tell my daughter, oh, take your money out of Metro Bank? No, I didn't. Because, you know, she's a student. She doesn't have that much money in there. But uh, anyway, the story says shares in one of the UK's so-called challenger banks have collapsed 35% today to a new record low after being forced to admit. Well, this was on uh, Wednesday that happened, right? To admit that it failed to have enough capital backing some commercial loans because of what it calls an accounting error. Uh, Bloomberg reports that Metro Bank PLC fell the most since going public after applying uh, an incorrectly low risk weighting to parts of its loan book or its balance sheet, right? With the British lender's chief saying he doesn't know how long the mortgages in question had been wrongly classified. So he doesn't even know how long they've been doing this uh, wrong for. The bank, which had expended rapidly to 66 branches. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're popping up everywhere. Since launching in 2010, also issued a profit warning, saying its full year profits and capital levels would be weaker than expected uh, after a soft end to the year, with CEO Craig Donaldson blaming the warning on intense competition in the mortgage market. And this is what he said. Uh, in an interview uh, with Bloomberg, I think it says, and I quote, it was a misinterpretation of the rules. Well, I guess that's a euphemism for maybe breaking the rules. And the misclassification dates back through 2018 at least. So he's saying this could go <laughs> at least 2018. Uh, so it could be even for even longer. Craig Donaldson, Metro Bank's chief executive officer, said by phone, and he, he said as well, we are putting it right, calling it an isolated incident that didn't affect the bank's earnings. He said the bank has been communicating with Britain's Prudential Regulation Authority. Uh, so there you go. Metro Bank, is it safe? Uh, are the other challenger banks doing the same thing? Uh, Zero Hedge uh, goes on to mention them. Uh, banks like uh, Aldermore, Atom Bank, Monzo, N26, Oak North, Starling Bank, Tendum, Tesco Bank, and Virgin Money. Uh, and the other thing that the guy who wrote this points out, uh, and I, I'll quote him here at the end, he says, the question we should all be asking is a simple one. How did Metro manage to lie to regulators or perhaps more charitably, how did regulators not spot this for so long? Uh, those butterflies you feel in the pit of your stomach are warranted as the awful sense of deja vu all over again. <laughs> That's uh, Yogi Bear. Bear, he said deja vu all over again. Uh, deja vu means all over again in French, but <laughs> that was one of his classic comments. It's deja vu all over again. Uh, rears its ugly head since we all know what happened the last time banks started uh, to get busted for misclassifying risk-weighted assets on their books. So, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, uh, I'll bring you out of your uh, curiosity and suspense. So uh, the safest bank, in my opinion, is C, Whore and Co. Uh, you probably never heard of them. I have heard of them. I've heard I've heard I heard of them uh, quite a few years ago, Seahorn uh, and Co. Well, they're uh, probably the oldest private bank uh, in the city of London. They're even older than the Bank of England. Uh, they were the the company was founded in 1672. <laughs> so old old bank. And I'll read here from their history, and then I'll, I'll tell you why I think it's the safest. Uh, bank in the UK. And uh, again, uh, that's in the context of fiat, keeping your fiat money in the bank. I still think uh, it's uh, very prudent to keep uh, 
part of your savings, if you're lucky enough to have enough savings uh, uh, in precious metals, uh, physical gold and silver. Uh, of course, uh, what I'm doing here is giving you options as well, you know, uh, and uh, so that's why I'm looking at, and I think uh, this bank is a model for, a, a good model for the banking system as a whole. And even uh, a few years ago, I couldn't find a, the story online, but I, I remember hearing that one of the partners of this bank uh, testified in, in parliament at a com uh, select committee, if you want to call it, and he, they asked him, uh, what's the secret of uh, their bank? Why didn't, weren't they affected by the financial crisis? How come they've been in, in business for almost 350 years? And uh, the partner said, well, because we uh, are an unlimited liability company. We, we, that's how we work. And I'll come to that in a minute. So the history, and I'll read here from their website. I'll put their uh, link to their website below says, a long and enduring history, Sehor & Co. is the sole survivor of the private deposit banks which were established in the 17th and 18th centuries. The bank has been owned and directed by members of the Hoar family since it was founded by Richard Hoare in 1672. In the days before street numbering, businesses were identified by signs. Richard Hoare traded at at the sign of the Golden Bottle in Cheapside. In 1690, he moved the business to new premises in Fleet Street within the city of London, the site of today's head office. I think they have a, another office in the West End of London. That's it. I listened to the uh, little clip that you will find in, the, um, in their website uh, of Alexander Hoare. He's a, uh, one of the seven partners and a director of the bank. And basically what he said, uh, the seven partners, they own all of the bank. They're all cousins <laughs> and virtually all descended from the founder, uh, Sir Richard Hoare. Uh, and uh, Richard Hoare uh, opened uh, the books or the accounts of the business in July of 1672. Also, uh, if you Google... Uh, at the sign of the golden bottle. This is what uh, Wikipedia says uh, about C. Charles uh, Richard Hoare. He was granted the freedom of the goldsmith's company on July 5th, 1672. This date marks the foundation of Hoare's bank. And it was around then that Richard Hoare established his goldsmith's business at the sign of the golden bottom in Cheapside. I guess uh, the Rothschilds did the same thing at the Red Shield. Uh, their names were really Bauer. Uh, am I defending these people or making a judgment on their family? I know uh, nothing about the Hoare family. I'm just talking about the business and the banking. Anyway, so they're all cousins and uh, virtually all descended from uh, the founder. Uh, they all, uh, they own the whole bank, the seven partners. Um, and he talks about the key distinguish, distinguishing fit feature of their bank uh, as compared uh, to normal banks that we have today. And he says the most, the key one is unlimited uh, liability. Uh, they run on an unlimited liability basis, which means all seven partners are personally liable for everything the bank does. So, um, that's the difference. Uh, all the major banks now, uh, they're uh, public companies, uh, CEOs, uh, directors. Yeah, they do have shares in those banks, but uh, they have no liability if the bank goes bust. You know, they'll be okay. It's the depositors that get hurt and the taxpayer. Uh, the other... Uh, thing he talks about is that they, because of this the fact that they're all liable for it, the partners, they take a lot of care and they're prudent and conservative, maintain uh, long-term quality uh, and risk management above short-term gains. So they're looking more for the long-term uh, management of risks. Uh, they try to avoid uh, short-term gains. Uh, so, and he talks about the strands in running a tight ship uh, you know, or risks, uh, you know, that exist in an, unlim an unlimited liability uh, company or, or bank. 
so you need, uh, he, he says, you need, you need a strong balance sheet, very liquid, uh, to focus on their niche. So basically he says, uh, we are a UK bank. We don't want to expand into the continent or to Europe or other countries. Uh, our business is with the UK, with the people in the UK, and, and that's what we focus on. Uh, three, vast majority of their profits goes back into the business. And he also talks about how they do a lot of philanthropy. Uh, a lot of their profits, a good share of their profits, goes into a charitable trust and they even allow their clients uh, to uh, be part uh, to create their own charitable trust if they want. One of the key things as well about keeping you know a tight uh, ship is their independence. You know they have no conflict of interest and with that they can be sound, safe and efficient for their uh, customers or clients. Uh, and the other point he makes is that uh, being a family business, the difference, you know, one of the differences uh, or contrasts with public, big public companies is that they have employees there that have worked for over 40 years. And some of their customers, uh, they've, you know, the families have been uh, banking with them for uh, generations. And he actually says sometimes more than generations. I would say that's like uh, centuries. <laughs> so, uh so how can anyone open an account with this bank? They do provide uh, a list of their services. Uh, let's have a look here. So they have uh, current accounts, uh, borrowing, deposit accounts, treasury and foreign exchange, <coughs> excuse me, tax, philanthropy, cash administration services, trusts, and estate planning. Uh, so I've looked at their uh, current accounts. Um, and uh, how to maintain an account. And, and it isn't cheap, so it's not for everyone. Am I gonna open an account with them? Probably not. Uh, it says uh, you need to pay 60 pounds a month to maintain your current accounts. And there are uh, fees for you know, online, mobile, and automated transactions as well. Uh, but it says the above charges apply to an entire month unless average cleared credit balance of 25,000 is maintained on all accounts at all times. So yeah, this is, uh, well, as everything nowadays, if you want quality, you're gonna have to pay for it. So that's uh, C and Hor uh, and Co. In my opinion, uh, probably the safest bank in the UK in terms of keeping your uh, fiat money in there. Uh, am I saying you should get rid of your gold and put your money with them? No. As you can see, they even started out as goldsmiths. So it just goes to show how gold is important. Uh, I think I called them a few years ago. Uh, they don't, I don't think they provide uh, services for storing uh, or a gold on deposit or coins. That might have changed, I don't know. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit that like button, share it far and wide. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, yeah, uh, make sure you do. And also hit the uh, little bell to get notified of my videos. Uh, you can also follow me on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. I wish you all a great day, a great uh, weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.